Peter, the, uh, the despite and the content that you say flashes around the group, I, I believe that this has often got something to do with insecurity. Do you think if the group gets more successful you might lose some of this insecurity? Well, we did actually regard ourselves in being a, in, in a successful position, say, a couple of months ago, because we had passed through a fantastic period of insecurity when our record just never seemed to come out for ages and ages after our second release. And uh, when it did, in the end, we, everyone in the group changed, you know, the arguments that had, had, had gone on and everything all changed. I think, and also, we respected our audience for still being there, you know, after such a long time. One of the reasons you must stay together is for the money. Um, how much do you personally make and what is the, your gross income for a typical week? It's fantastically hard to, to say, you know. I'm sorry. I've heard a lot about you and the rest of the group taking drugs, Pete. Does this mean you're usually blocked up when you're actually on stage? Right? No, but it means we're blocked up all the time, you know. <laughs> Going, no, it just means that, you know, there are certain things which, which, well, levels of perception which are opened up by certain drugs that, which people in the group don't mind resorting to, you know, I mean, it, you can r ruin a night on the stage, actually, by sort of taking drugs. I mean, it doesn't necessarily make you play well. In fact, the best way to play on the stage is stone cold sober, but it's not the best way to do other things, you know. In my generation, you wrote, I hope I die before I get old. Do you in fact mean it? Yes. Um, Peter, now the group uh, gets in a lot better together, um, there's no possibility of the who breaking up, is there? Well, this is, you know, I mean, the fact is the who aren't getting on any better together, we're pretending, you know. And it's, it's not hard to pretend because, I mean, you pretend to get on with your parents, you pretend you're happy at home, you know, because it's convenient. But does you this know. make for a good working atmosphere, do you think? Well, the working atmosphere in any group, I think, is, is probably very similar to ours, you know. I've met s thousands of groups now, you know, and I mean, there's the Kinks, for example, there's two brothers in a group, you know, and whether or not there's any friction there, but I've always known friction between brothers of any kind, you know, mm -hmm. and the Walker brothers and all that sort of thing. There must be friction between two people in the same family, so God knows how they get on, you know. You said that girls came to see you mainly to, to look at the clothes you wear. Don't yeah. you think that most of them come for a certain sexual thrill they get out of your clothes? Look, you know, our group's probably one of the most unglamorous on the stage today, you know. I mean, <laughs> no, really, I mean, we, this is one of our, was one of our big problems, you know, and probably still is, you know, is that the group didn't have enough glam, it was all between clothes and, and, and smashing things up and it was all mechanical things, it was bricks and stones and things and not enough sort of normal group things, you know. I mean the Walker Brothers card were looking fantastic and within weeks they're at the top of the charts, you know. I don't know whether you ever saw their first TV appearance, but you know they even got me going, you know. What about musical quality though? You said that mm. you don't think your group has got any, why don't you try and give it some? Because we don't particularly want it to give it quality. We've tried and it's failed so miserably, you know, we're not... But failed in what way? You mean because he doesn't make the chart? Quality or? doesn't come in, you know, it doesn't come into what we're doing at all. Our, our group, as I said, you know, it's, it's not that sort of group. It's not it's got anything to do with quality. We're more interested in, in production and, and keeping moving, you know. And I think quality leads to a sort of stasism, you know, really. But uh, I mean, what do you mean by that? I mean... Well, it means that if you don't... If you, if you steer clear of quality, you're all right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, this is the truth, you know. How long do you think audiences are going to go on accepting this, um, this music that hasn't got any quality? Don't you think that people are going to suddenly well, come to the What has got conclusion? quality in the pop business? You know, what's got quality in anything, you know? I mean, it's, it's just a sort of a matter of standards, you know? And I mean, standards are exploited in thousands of books, you know. You can, if, if, you, if you're after sort of standards, you can find them anywhere, you know. But there's... In the pop business, you know, we're lucky in that there are no standards, you know. But wouldn't you say the Beatles and people like that had a certain musical quality? Ooh, you know, that's a tough question. I, I actually, this afternoon, we, John and I, were listening to a stereo LP of the Beatles, in which the voices come out of one side and the backing track comes out of the other. And when you actually hear the backing tracks of the Beatles without their voices, they're flipping loud, you know.